Hello friends, welcome to I am Exploration. In this video, you will learn 8 clinical facts about Manjaro, also known as Tirzepatite. For an in-depth summary, make sure to check out our prior video, link in the description below. My name is Sana, I am a board certified internal medicine physician. I am working as a primary care physician. Let's begin. Starting with the mechanism of action. Tirzepatite is a novel dual GIP1 receptor that is glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide receptor and GLP-1 receptor that is glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonist. It enhances first and second phase insulin secretion, reduces glucagon levels both in a glucose-dependent manner. It slows gastric empty and decreases food intake. Fact number 2. Indications of Manjaro it is used as an adjunct to diet and exercise to improve glycemic control in adults with type 2 diabetes. It is not indicated for use in patients with type 1 diabetes. It has also not been studied in patients with a history of pancreatitis. With excellent weight loss results in clinical trials, it is anticipated that Manjaro is likely to be approved for weight loss in near future. Moving on to the third clinical aspect, how to administer Manjaro. It is injected subcutaneously in the abdomen, thigh, or upper arm once weekly, any time of the day, with or without meals. One can rotate the injection site with each dose. Let's discuss the dosing. The recommended starting dose is 2.5 mg injected subcutaneously once a week. The dose is meant for treatment initiation and not for glycemic control. After 4 weeks, the dose can be injected to 5 mg once a week. If additional glycemic control is needed, the dose can be increased in 2.5 mg increments after the first 4 weeks on the current dose. The maximum dose is 15 mg subcutaneously once a week. Moving on to dose adjustments. No dose adjustment is required in geriatric patients. For renal or hepatic impairment, no dose adjustment is recommended. For patients with severe gastrointestinal adverse effects like vomiting, diarrhea, renal function should be monitored closely when initiating or escalating doses of Manjaro. Some of the common adverse reactions of Manjaro include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, decreased appetite, constipation, and abdominal pain. Are you finding this information useful? Support me by clicking the like button. I appreciate it. Moving on. Let's go over some warning and precautions. First is thyroid cell tumor. Tirzepatite caused dose-dependent and treatment duration-dependent increase in the incidence of thyroid C-cell tumors in two-year studies in rats. Human relevance of this finding has not been determined. It is unknown if Munjaro causes thyroid cell tumors in humans. Munjaro is contraindicated in patients with personal or family history of medullary thyroid carcinoma or in patients with multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2. There is a higher risk of pancreatitis with Monjaro use. When used in combination with insulin or sulfonylurea, Monjaro can increase the risk of hypoglycemia. Therefore, consider reducing the dose of insulin and sulfonylurea when starting the patient on Monjaro. Hypersensitivity reactions may occur with Monjaro. If hypersensitivity occurs, discontinue the treatment. Monjaro may cause nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which if severe can increase the risk of acute kidney injury or worsen chronic kidney disease. If severe, patient may eventually need hemodialysis. Monjaro is not recommended for patients with severe gastroparesis. Next warning is about diabetic retinopathy. Rapid improvement in glucose has been associated with temporary worsening of diabetic retinopathy. Patients with a history of diabetic retinopathy should be monitored for progression. Patients should be monitored for signs and symptoms of acute gallbladder disease like cholecystitis. Moving on to drug-drug interactions. As discussed before, Munjaro can increase the risk of hypoglycemia when used with sulfonylurea or insulin. Munjaro can also delay the gastric emptying, therefore impacting the absorption of other oral medications. Patients on warfarin should be monitored closely. Patients should be advised to switch to a non-oral contraceptive method or add a barrier method for four weeks after initiation or four weeks after each dose escalation. The non-oral contraceptives are not affected by Monjero. 
This brings us to the end of our discussion. For an in-depth summary, make sure to check out our prior video. Also check out the disclaimer in the description below. We are building something worthwhile at IM Exploration. For more actionable insights, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We wish you all the happiness and success. Until next time, keep learning and keep growing.